working out problems for 2.2. You can use graphs, you can use tables to do these. I'm gonna run through how I would do them, whatever works for you. So horizontal asymptotes, we want the limit. X approaches infinity, cosine of one over X, which I can make limit as X approaches zero of cosine of infinity, but of X actually. So we should get one if I'm not mistaken. It's a cosine of one over infinity when I plug that in, uh, which is basically zero, cosine of zero, which is one. Got to check it from both sides. Doesn't change anything. Means that it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Sine of two x over x. We do some fancy uh, do sine of x, cosine of x, put sine of x over x. Got all sorts of things we do here, but uh, not interested. This is just as this gets freakishly big, this doesn't. It's going to go to zero. So we get sine of infinity over infinity, which is basically zero because sine just bounces around between negative one and one. Do it the other way. Also equals zero. And off we go. So go to infinity zero over infinity. Now, negative infinity is different. That's negative, negative infinity over infinity. Well, this is going to grow really freakishly fast on top and negative infinity on the bottom. So it's going to go to negative infinity. The horizontal asymptote is at zero. That's not an asymptote, just that's an asymptote. This is going to go to 3x squared. Plug in zero, we just basically get infinity. As I said, it goes to 3x squared, so negative infinity is just going to get us the same thing because it's squared. Hmm, let me think about that for a minute. Yeah, it's going to square away. Yeah, it's going to go to positive infinity. Interesting, I just found a mistake in my old notes. So this one we almost need graphing calculators for, but we'll swing it without. As x goes to infinity, we get infinity over infinity. We basically get coefficients of two. This, as x goes to negative infinity, we get negative infinity over positive infinity. So we get negative two. In that the bottom will always be positive and the top is negative. 
Now here we got horizontal asymptote, y equals two, and y equals negative two. Limit x approaches infinity. Going to be positive coefficients one. They're both going to be positive one. Off we go. Uh, I really should just delete this, but I will leave what goes on with the sandwich theorem. Negative one is less than or equal to cosine of x, less than or equal to one. Hmm. I need a negative cosine of x. So let's multiply everything by a negative one greater than or equal to negative cosine of x, greater than or equal to negative one, which I could rewrite as this. Then I have to add one to get the one minus cos x on top. So it'll be zero less than or equal to one minus cosine of x, less than or equal to two. Divide by x squared, divide by x squared, Pretty neat, huh? So now we apply the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, and it won't matter because we have an x squared down here. And we get zero because this limit is zero and this limit is zero as we get to freakishly big, zero over freakishly big. Therefore, this one's between them, zero. That's how you do sandwich theorem. Don't swipe it if you don't want to. Let's try our little technique again. Apply the limit to the ends. Zero, zero, zero. I don't know, I think that's kind of cool the way the sandwich theorem works. Certainly not anything I would lose sleep over though. All right, I always use graphs. You may also use the table if you want. X over X minus two looks something like this. Two, so, when they say the limit as X approaches two from the negative side of X over X minus two, so from this side, we get negative infinity. X over X plus three. Something like this. And as X approaches negative three from the positive side, it's gonna be negative infinity. Definitely got to graph this one. Probably should use a graphing calculator. Let's x approaches zero from the negative side of int x over x. Well, if we graph it, we get some bizarre stuff. We 
see it's getting closer and closer to zero uh, infinity. So infinity and secant of x. See here. And this is pi over two. Coming from the right, positive side is a negative. Goofy, silly stuff. Well, let's see what we got here. Limit as x approaches infinity and x approaches negative infinity. All right, well, two or infinity is zero, so we get one. <coughs> Excuse me, and five. Now, if I plug in a negative there, negative infinity. Ain't going to change at all, just going to be 0 plus 1. And all the positives aren't going to change at all. All right, break this into 2x over x, sine of x over x. As we go to infinity, this is zero, see ya. This is two, so it's just two either way. Didn't matter whether it's going to positive infinity or negative infinity. All right, 15, limit. X approaches infinity, so that's gonna be y. Cosine of zero, which will be one over one, just one. Negative infinity has got nothing to do with it. It turns into zero. So limit as x approaches negative infinity of y is also one. This we could break up an x sine of x over two x squared, two sine of x over two x squared. Well, even though this has an x on top, it's just gonna be zero plus zero. So this is just going to vanish to nothing. And it does not matter if we are positive or negative in terms of infinity. Crazy math. All right, find the vertical asymptotes. Describe the behavior to the left and right of each vertical asymptote. Uh, I'm just gonna graph these um, and also keep my life simple. Vertical asymptote, it's at the bottom equals zero, x equals negative two. So if I were to graph this, out here at negative two, you get something weird like this. And that's just a rough idea. So let's see what they asked me to do. Describe behavior left and right of each vertical asymptote. So this one's going down to negative infinity. In other words, uh, left-hand behavior will be uh, x, negative infinity and x, positive infinity. So left hand limit. Based on the graph. Oh, pardon me. My bad. Add x equal negative two. Why would I write that? I don't know why I did that. Limit as x approaches negative two from the negative side of f of x down negative infinity. 
I was looking at the graph wrong. Limit as x approaches negative 2 from the positive side is positive infinity. All righty. Vertical asymptote. Let's do a little math. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Now I'm going to show you a little trick here. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Bring you back later. x squared minus 5x multiplying negative 6. Factor them x minus 6, x plus 1. Bring it back. Um, put it under the 6, x minus 3. Put it under that. And if it works, great. If not, bring it back up to the right side. What the heck just happened? Well, I factored the sucker. 2x squared, nice. Negative 6x plus x, nice. Negative 3, nice. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 and negative 1 half. So something like this. And I go out and look at it, and I get something like this, something like this, and something like this. How did I know that? Because I graphed it on a calculator. Or I plugged in numbers and saw what was going on. OK. Limit x approaches negative 1 half from the negative side, f of x, infinity. Limit x approaches negative one half positive side negative infinity. Limit x approaches three from the negative side f of x is infinity. And limit as x approaches that was weird three from the positive side negative infinity. That's a lot of work. Jeez, it's almost like I get paid to do this. Weird. Okay. Cotangent of X. All right, so the vertical asymptotes another mistake x equals k times pi k is all integers a little messy there I apologize so limit, and we'll just pick one. Actually, we'll write vertical asymptote. I'm pretty sure that's not the way I should do that. From the negative side, it's always negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches the vertical asymptote from the positive side is always positive infinity. Kill. Tangent of x over sine of x. Sine of x over cosine of x over sine of x is secant of x. Which, didn't we just do this? Seems very familiar. Well, I can go back a page. I believe that's a pi over two. Uh, so we got lots of things going on here. Uh, let's see if we can't sort this out. Vertical asymptote. 
x equals pi over two, five pi over two, dot, 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 limit as x approaches, I'm gonna call it x1, x1, pi over two, from this side is left, f of x is from the left, pi over two, positive infinity, and the limit as x approaches x1 on the positive side is negative infinity, and then it's flipped for the other one. Hmm. I'm out of space here. Vertical asymptote, x2 equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 3 pi oops, over 2, 7 pi over 2, dot, dot, dot. Limit as x approaches x1 from the negative side, f of x equals negative infinity, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And the limit to x2 as x approaches x2 from the positive side, f of x is positive infinity. Ah, oh, wow, that's a lot of work. All right, this is stupid, so I do apologize for it. Because part A, it's just the big one. Negative 4x to the third. And in this case, for part B, there's no AJ. We're here for A. Take the biggest, we just get three. And for B, horizontal asymptotes, y equals plus or minus two. Oh, for goodness sake, that's a vertical asymptotes. No, I made a mistake. Horizontal asymptote, y equals three. Helps if you are TFQ, but I did. I just did it after the fact. Okay, A, biggest power, we're gonna get one over two X. Then B, horizontal asymptote, since the power on the bottom is bigger, Y equals zero. And over here, A, negative two, why did I do that? Negative X squared. And B, horizontal asymptote, there are no horizontal asymptotes. There will be a slant asymptote or some other sort of asymptote. Now I want to make sure you're aware of what's going on left and right. So A, limit as X approaches positive infinity, e to the X will dominate, e to the X, limit as X approaches negative infinity, negative two X. Limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. Uh, the ln of uh, x just kind of tops out. It starts gaining slowly and surely. The x is going to far outstrip it. So it's just x. Graph it if you don't believe me. And then since it's in absolute values, ooh, I got to be careful here. Limit as x, of, well, well, it doesn't really matter. First off, this will not impact. Yeah, it's even though it's going negative, you think something might be happening, it's actually going positive because of the way it's set up. Uh, it's an absolute value. Um, and this goes to negative infinity, but it's still just x. And it's sort of 
be some funky weirdness going on in the middle of the graph, but at the far right and far left, it'll still be close to X. Definitely graph this if you're not sure what's going on there. All right, let's do all this nonsense. A little piecewise action. Looks like something like this. And this. So A limit x approaches negative infinity of f of x is zero. Limit as x approaches infinity f of x is negative one. C limit as x approaches zero from negative side, negative infinity. Limit as x zero from the positive side of f of x. Equals negative one. All right, now I'm gonna be lazy. Wrote it all out the first time. Won't do that again. This is gonna look something like this and this. So we get one, coefficients, that's very poorly drawn, deal with it. Zero, plug in zero, negative two, positive two, positive infinity. If you're thinking of an OCD thing with underlying my answers, well, you're right, so it's all good. And, I warned you about this little trick. Is this the trick we're doing? Yeah, it is. Okay. We're gonna graph, plug in one over X, one over X, E to the one over X. And we get something very weird. So off we go. Limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is the same as limit as x approaches zero. Interesting. F of one over X, which is positive infinity. Interesting. Why the hell we're doing this? I have no idea, but hey, deal with it. X approaches negative infinity, F of X equals limit as X approaches zero from the negative side of F of one over X, which is zero. Do it again, graph. One over X, sine of X. There's something weird like this. There's gotta be a hole here if I plug in zero. Weird. Limit x approaches infinity f of x equals limit x approaches zero from the positive side f of one over x equals one.
So that's sine of x over x is approach zero. Kill. Limit x approaches negative infinity f of x. Limit x approaches zero negative f of one over x. Same thing, one. Notice it never gets there, it just the limit is. Woo! And my hands are sore. Hard work. Happy mathing.